Hello again everyone, Genghis here of course, and today I have an E100 video for you. Now uh, before I talk about the battle, I just want to mention that yes, my E100 setup is rather expensive, but E100 gets special treatment. What do I need, uh, mean with that? I use chocolate, center punch, I replace a fire extinguisher because you don't burn frontly anymore. Before I used to uh, replace a medkit with chocolate, rather often I was going to use a big repair kit too. And even if I carry 14 AP and 11 HU shells, I basically always fire heat. Like, always. Anyway, we are in Redshire, there's only one RT. And it's not really an RT which hurts a lot, uh, or which hurts E100 a lot. Uh, an object 261 in the enemy team. So, uh, I'm going to go uh, brawl in the heavy corner. I mean, it doesn't really matter, even if there were 5 RTs, I'd probably go there. Just cause, like, why are you RT safe on this map except. except. Yeah, you know what I mean? But, uh, yeah. Now, I'm kind of worried, because the enemy team has two E100s and two mouses, as well as three E75s and, you know, a couple other stuff which might go there. Well, we only really have two E100s and two E75s as we all, you know, like, frontline tanks. I guess you could kind of count the E4. Uh, so we're going to see as how that goes. Uh, we have a bit of support back here, a Centurion 7-1 and a 50B, but they're not going to be useful if the enemies are intelligent. And we also have a 183 and a Jack Panzer with us. I guess the Jack Panzer is also a tank which can push if played well. But on the other side, if he just exposes his lower plate, he can get destroyed really fast. Now I see a Waffle there and... Uh, well, my love for Waffles is rather well known, especially for those of you who watch my stream. But sadly, I can't get a shot on him. So, uh, meh on that. However, that's actually a really, really important piece of information. Because waffles on this map, there's like two positions they like to go to a lot. One is like in this area, somewhere behind five bushes, and the other one is up here. Uh, this area means they can actually shoot you in the right here if you go around the corner, and this area means they can shoot you if you push down here. Uh, so that's you know, I mean, waffle hurts uh, a lot. So as they are not in that area, it gives me a mo uh, a lot more confidence about me being able to go where I really want to go and not being blocked. So this E4 at last gives me this corner, and E4 is not a tank which is good at sidescaping, and E100 is a tank which is good at sidescaping. Um, so yeah. Now that enemy E100 just got set on fire and lost 1400 HP to an Arty shot, because Arty prevents camping, and uh, yeah. And the E75 got raped by the Jack Panzer for 1000 HP. I get an unlucky bouncer. And I want to go back, but Mr. Genius E75 stock <coughs> decides that he wants to block me. However, as I shot slightly before him, and uh, as I have chocolate, I know I shoot faster than him. So I take the advantage and put a shot into the mouse. Our Jack Panzer does a rather brave but actually rather effective move of just yellowing in to take out the enemy 100. Uh, and yeah, I'm back at the corner, nothing special there trying to get a shot on the mouse. Kind of a lucky shot there, but it hits, penetrates and even high rolls. Taking, uh, well, I now took out 1600 HP of that mouse, so over half in two shots. Which is always rather positive, I would say. Now I really want to take out this one shot mouse, not shoot the nearly full life mouse. Um, but yeah, I guess it's not to be. I want, like right now I'm in a good position because I'm hiding my lower plate. So I don't really want to move up either, because, well, when you 100 is just hiding his ar lower plate and angling his turret is basically impenetrable, and you 100 just doing neither of those is basically unarmored, at least against Titus. Honestly, I have no idea how I pinned the T-54 there, because he was going back, so his upper plate was angled upwards and so was his turret, but I guess I did pen him, and he felt that. Now, right now I'm getting a bit worried because, well, you know, that guy is a moron and nearly dead. And that guy is dead. But there's still some more support coming, even if a bit late. However, on the bad side of things, the enemy mouse just damaged my gun. I don't have a repair kit anymore because I used that earlier. So, uh, yeah. E100 was a damaged gun. Best sniper EU. I see this bat check coming. But I don't want to turn around for him, I want to try and take out one of these one-shots, for example. Uh, however, they're not making it very easy for me. Howe <laughs> however, 
damage gun E100, best E100 sniper, so yeah. See the bad shit's finally there? I'm gonna do something here. I'm gonna hide my ass behind the Jack Panzer. The only thing that the bad shit can shoot is my turret ass. And then when I see the bad shit is nearly empty and I'm reloaded, I turn both my turret and hole because otherwise my rotation would just be too slow. Uh, yeah. Right now I'm keeping an eye, I see the E100 is yodoing in. Uh, so he should keep away the enemy mouse for the moment, which allows me to even turn my turret the entire time uh, with decent safety. So I put another shot with my damage gun into that mouse, uh, leaving it at 10 HP. I tried to ram it, but <laughs> the mouse dodges my ram, which I guess kind of sounds stupid. However, while I was having fun over here and so on, uh, while well, the enemy waffles push the middle, but that's not really the biggest problem. The biggest problem is that they have three or four tanks in our base. I take a shot on the move because E100 with a uh, damage gun is the best <laughs> tank to shoot on the move. No, I just have to get back to base and, you know, if I'm loaded I might as well shoot. While my team decides to keep pushing. I of course uh, spam defend the base in chat and oh shit all. Aim spotted, angle, angle to it, get in cover, get in cover, wiggle a bit, re-angle, get down. I do not know why he was not shooting by the way, maybe he thought he couldn't penetrate me, um, maybe he wasn't loaded, but in that case why wasn't he going back, I honestly have no idea, but uh, whew, that waffle there, if he would have killed me, would have probably won the game for the enemy team, so rather positive that didn't happen, as he gets taken out. So uh, yeah, we are down one tank, but mainly looking at the HP bar, we're also down by a lot of HP. The enemy still have an RT, and on this map, I mean first of all it's not really 261, so it's going to be able to run, it's it can be everywhere. We have only Lorraine, which could potentially hunt it down. Uh, it's not like they had a DW-900, which is just going to get you know killed as soon as they push base. So they're going to have an RT, which is going to keep shooting us all the time, probably. And make it really hard for us to cap, for example. And they have mediums and Oblique 430 and anti-54E1. Especially Oblique 430 on this map is really powerful, it has very high camo. It has a very good gun, it can use ridge runners rather well. And the enemies start capping. So I'm like, okay. I don't... I want to talk about this right now. The... Ah, just too late, but whatever. <laughs> My line of thought right now was, um... The last time the enemies were spotted here is a long time ago. If they just started capping now... It doesn't really make sense that uh, it is Oblik 430 because he was the furthest in front and he is really fast, oh, a rather fast tank, it's a medium. So he would have really been in the cap a long time. So right now I'm thinking that the Oblik 430, well, just before he got spotted, was either going back or trying to defend from this ridge line. Now effectively he's defending from here. Damage gun for the win, I just yodo pen him. And in the same uh, moment, I guess, I spot that the 100 is a tank which is capping. Now he tracks me, I can't do anything about it, I'm trying to angle, but... Well, Object for Sword uh, has a really, really high APCR pen. I guess I angled a bit too much, but basically I angled so much because I was scared he would circle me. Which is what I would have done if I were him. But he just decided to shoot me. Now, right now, I just want to talk about that. I had heat loaded and I already pressed 3 for loading HE next shell. My line of thought behind that was that I wanted to uh, shoot the 430 with heat kill him, and then as I had a damaged gun and the E100 was rather far away, I would shoot heat, uh, no, not heat, HE at the E100 to decap him. However, the object was already run away, so I ended up taking a snapshot uh, at the E100 to it, and uh, somehow damaged gun for the win, I get Russian accuracy. Now I want to talk about this right here too. I saw the object was already disappeared. What I would have done if I were him, is go up here, use the ridge gun, use the bushes, go in my side, you know? But uh, that's why I was turning that way, by the way. I was expecting him to come, I wanted to surprise him. But he didn't do that. Now, I've got a damaged ammo rack, and he could have shot me once more, before I reloaded. But he didn't know that. In, th in that kind of situation, it's really important that you don't just fall back all the time. Because then the enemy is going to go away. Is he still reloading? Does he have damaged ammo rack? What's up with him? However, if you actually go forwards in a long reload tank, or in an auto loader, Enemies are going to be thinking you are loaded, and if they are low health, they are going to run away and not concentrate on shooting you. Um, mainly mid, mid 
uh, skill enemies. A Unicum is probably going to just know your aim time by heart. So I've got Edgy loaded. The Phosphorid is running away, so I just take a snapshot at the E100 and manage to decap once more. Let's have a look at the post game stats of that rather, in my opinion, epic game. Um, I got a rather unsurprising high caliber, a uh, defender medal, and a fire for effect, uh, aka participation medal. If we have a look at the team stats, I ended up doing 7811 damage, although I only got one kill. Um, I also collected 112 base defense points. Basically defending the base against two enemy tanks completely on my own with a damage gun and with a big HP disadvantage. Thus giving my time. I wasn't really talking about it but it was basically a cap race and uh, my decapping uh, allowed us to win because otherwise the enemy would have capped just before us. Or it would have been maybe a draw. Um, so yeah, that's rather positive. I managed to block uh, 1800 damage with my armor which is nothing special either. And I managed to spot 1000, which is nothing special either. Uh, but yeah, I got 1123 raw XP for that battle, which is rather good. Uh, otherwise, I guess the 183 didn't do a too bad job, and so did the Centurion 71. But the rest of our team was rather disappointing. Also, I will give credit to the Jack Pansy 100 for his Yoda Wish play. It was funny to watch, and actually helped us push that side really fast. Uh, I got 110,000 credits brittle, of which. Uh, <laughs> Well, I paid 24,000 because uh, heat spamming was chocolate for the win, basically. But uh, yeah, I basically drive my 100 but once per day. Um, and I don't really care if I lose a bit of credits here or there. I've got premium account and premium tanks and whatever if I want to form credits. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, if you did, well, maybe uh, like my channel, follow my channel, follow my Twitch, share my, this video with your friends. And tell me in the comments if you think I played well, if I just got lucky that my damage gun kept hitting anyway because of Yoda swag, or um, if you think I could have done anything better for example. Also as always tell me what you want to see in the comments. Uh, there's not really much you're telling me what you want to see on this channel. The only thing I heard about is, uh, well there's two things I heard about. Once is, uh, one is a guide to field commanding aka war leading aka leading clan wars or stronghold battles which I've been thinking about and trying to get ideas how to actually implement it because it's not really an obvious thing like showing how to angle for example um, and how to do it and the other thing is a general guide of like how to be a unicum and what kind of rules you have to adhere but while I know what I want to well I know what the rules would be and so on I don't really know how to make that kind of video actually interesting and not just me talking without a camera for 10 minutes straight, which I could just as well write a forum guide for. Anyway, yeah, tell me in the comments. See you next time. Bye bye, Genghis here.